Hi guys, I have a Kleenex box tutorial for you today. And we start making the box. The box, um, I'm making the base and the lid. And the base measures seven and a quarter by 11 and, s 11 and seven eighths. And the lid is seven and three eighths by 12 inches. So they are a, the lid is a little little bit bigger in the paper size than the um, bottom and then i just score both papers all around at one and three eighths and that makes the lid just a little have the same depth as the box but it is a little bit wider than the bottom box so then they fit together pretty good so that is a tip when if you do boxes what i did i just measured out um the middle and then i kind of calculated as the 12 in inch was the widest paper i had I kind of calculated with that 12 inch to figure out um how high i could make the box edges basically took the lid uh, minus the 12 the 12 inches minus the lid and divided it into yeah mathematics um, then I'm cutting down small wedges out of those smaller parts at the edges this is to make the box itself and you cut a little little wedge because then you will be it will be easier to put it together um, because you won't uh, get stuck in the bottom sort of but uh, after I cut out all of them and I did not cut them out together with the papers on top of each other I cut them out one paper at a time uh, and just realized that it might look like I did that then I just creased the edges and I couldn't find my bone folder at that time so I used the back side of my uh, Martha Stewart craft knife works pretty good and if you don't have a bone folder you can always use like the back of a knife or or anything but um, I do recommend getting a bone folder because they are a little bit softer in the plastic and therefore they will kind of be nicer to your paper also they will glide easier over your paper when I put a my box together I'm using some Crafters Companion tape it's actually really really strong and as long as you kind of push together the the cardstock corners uh, after you have uh, put them together so here I put them together and then I kind of use my fingers put it between my fingers and rub um, that will help the glue to kind of bond with the paper and it's very hard to put apart and pull apart afterwards but if you don't have the craft companion tape you can just easier use like red line tape or be creative tape or, or something that is a little bit stronger I think um, they the Stampin' Up have something called fast fuse that you can use also on the top of the lid I want to kind of cut out for the oval and I'm going to make it very very easy for me so I'm going to cut it out square because I'm lazy uh, what I did I kind of measured the width from the edge of the box into that oval in the middle um, of the oval and that would give me the um, thinnest area and then I marked it with my little white gel pen recommendation the thing that I didn't do is uh, don't mark it on the top I marked it on the top of the box if I marked it underneath I didn't ha have to hide it but I didn't so uh, I actually hid it under some decorations later on so it's always fixable most things are always fixable i rarely throw things out if i make something wrong with them i just try to figure out a way to actually get them to work anyway um so don't give up if 
something goes wrong. Well, when I have cut boxes wrong, I usually try to keep, I cut it apart and keep the flat pieces to see if I can use them for other projects. Um, but it's very hard to fix a box where you cut, cut it two inches too small or something like that. But when you draw things and such, there's always ways of fixing the the issues that you have done. Then I just cut out the middle, kind of lined up the vertical line on the knife uh, with those white dots to try to get that perfect rectangle. And then I go, go over with that um, back of the craft knife again to crease all the edges of my box. Um, a tip when you are using your scoreboard to score things, fold them so that the score line, um, the non bumpy side, the one that has a valley on it, on the outside, and the one that has a mountain on it on the inside, because that is how the paper is when you score it, that is what uh, the best way to crease the paper because it has been uh, widened on that way, if you understand what I mean. Then I'm use using a circular punch to punch out these holes. Doesn't really matter what size it is. Take whatever you like which fits with your project. Um, I do that because I'm going to make a decoration card in the middle and uh, you need to take that out of of the box uh, if you're going to use it, but you can still use the box itself and most of the decorations is actually going to be on the box and not on that uh, card inside, but you will see that later. Then I just put together all the corners just the same way that I did the bottom and I just push them together and rub them a little bit beneath my fingers and that will put them together. Then I just put the lid on and that was the box part ready. Now we're going to do the card inside and the card inside is cut at nine and one eighth by four and five eighths. Um, because that is basically the uh, size of the Kleenex box. Um, and then I just add the <laughs> box lid on. It's actually easier to put the card in first and then add the box lid on. Um, but we want that to be decorated. But first I'm using a pencil to kind of mark off the edges um, because I wanted to know where my kind of design area was. Then I'm going to use some papers. This is from Boca in the Snow by uh, Lawn Fawn. Uh, all of the papers and, and stamps I'm using today is actually by Lawn Fawn. I'm using a whole bunch of different stamp sets. Uh, it's, it's going to be so much fun. Uh, but uh, the paper is six by six inches. They do have the 12 by 12, but uh, I usually don't buy them because that usually makes I have to pay much more postage. So instead I've used the six by six and I'm gonna butt those uh, pieces of paper up uh, between each other and then I'm gonna hide that seam with uh, some other creations so that people can't see that I have a seam there. After I put it down using my tape runner, I am going to do a snowy hill. I'm using the leftover piece from mm, what I when I cut out the card. And then I'm just using some washi tape to put on uh, these hills. These are actually the Simon's stamp hills because I didn't have the lawn fawn hills when I did this project. But you can do it with those two. And the Simon's Stamp Hills doesn't have stitched lines. They have separate ones that have stitched lines. And I'm usually very, very lazy. So I rarely use the stitch lines of those. Kind of why I bought the Lawn Fawn ones. Because I really wanted to have the stitched ones without needing to go through twice through my machine. Then I'm going to just tape down that little 
hill and as you see I actually get that hill to be falling a little bit lower than the paper itself but it doesn't really matter because I'm gonna cover that up with some cool things. And now I'm gonna do some stamping. I'm using VersaFine uh, Onyx Black. I, if I used Memento I could have kind of shaded them with uh, my Copics. But at the same time you want your uh, background to be not as detailed as the fronter part of your design. Uh, the further away something is in your creation the less details you will see so if you want to have depth in your creation you want to kind of um, figure out how to uh, give it dimension one way is what i'm doing here i'm actually going to take my trees and some i put behind the little hill and some i put on top of the hill and that makes it look like the trees behind the hill is actually further away uh, also if you when you use stamps like these that have an edge at the bottom you can actually put them um, at different heights to make it look like things are further away and then we have my third idea this is all ideas you can do without using dimensionals and that is to use different shades of ink um, like for these birch trees i would then use black ink on the ones that is closest to me and the further they are away the lighter the ink i would use so i would use a gray ink different shades of gray um, and use the darker grays closer to me and the lighter grays for the trees that are going to be further further away and in that way you will create dimension so you can see already here that some that I have created a whole bunch of dimension even though all of them are in the same plane all of them are just used ordinary glue so I don't have a bulky little card in the middle I just have a flat card the layers will build a little little bit but not that much and then I just I cut them all out by hand and then I tape them around, down I stamped a whole bunch of those trees there were a lot of trees stamped after I've done this I kind of realized I need something to cover the edges so I am going to give this card a frame and I'm going to use these uh, this is a matte finish kind of silver I wanted to use something very very silvery but I couldn't find one and I kind of figured that this matte one actually fitted a little bit better with my creations due to it not being too shiny um, at all so what I did was I again um, measured the hole and kind of figured out how to give it a little teeny tiny extra border so you actually will see this silver cardstock um, when you have the box closed and also uh, when you pick out the card to start using the Kleenexes you will be able to um, the edges will be covered by this silver and then I just cut it out uh, again lining up the vertical line with the previous um, edges and also with the um, measurements on the ruler that's on the cutting board and that is how my little frame looked and I'm using my tape runner to put it to the card Um, I tried different ways of attaching this but I realized that the easiest way was to take the frame and add it to the card. It's not perfect but it's good enough. And that is the background upside down. This is the background right side up. And that was the background. 
and uh, now I'm gonna do some decorating and I have picked out a whole bunch of different stamp sets from Lawn Fawn. I just grabbed a whole bunch of them. I thought that would be fun. And then I used my Memento Tuxedo Black ink and I stamped them up on some Nina. I'm not going to color all of these on screen because this video would be very, very long. But I have some notes about the coloring and that is I have made sure that the shadows look like the light source will be in the middle of the box so the characters on the right side will have their dark shadows on the right side and the highlights on the left side and the creatures on the left side will have the shadows on the left side and the highlights on the right side so he's gonna be on the right side of the box after I had colored all of these, I am putting them onto my box one at a time. I'm using both the um, two-way sig glue pen, but it took so much time. So in the end, I ended up actually using some of the Scotch uh, quick dry glue. Uh, which I poured uh, in a little pile beside me and then I used a piece of scrap paper to add onto the back side of all of the characters. Um, and yeah, you're not gonna see me <laughs> attach all of the characters because I ended up having a lot of them like this. And for the finishing touch, I'm actually adding a teeny tiny little heart to the snowbank. And that is my project for today. I hope you liked it. If you do, please thumbs it up. If you have any questions, just comment down below. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you later. Bye!